Alternator charging. How does it work and what role does it play in an RV travel trailer's power system? Today, we're gonna to show you how we utilize the alternator charging in our 2021 Shadow Cruiser travel trailer. And as a bonus today, we're also gonna show you how we set up this truck camper to use alternator charging to help charge this DIY power station. We set up alternator charging on this truck camper using the power source for the seven pin connector. Fred Jr. helped us to wire all that up. Let's show you how we did that. Roger and I already drilled the hole in the side of the truck bed with a rubber grommet. We have our Anderson plug and 10 feet of wire. Bubba, tell us what we're gonna do next. Next, we're gonna run the wire along the bottom side of the bumper and we're gonna tie it into our seven pin trailer wiring harness and we're gonna do it using these wire taps. Right, we're gonna do that on the back end uh, where the wires all go into the harness. For today's project, we're gonna use these quick splice connectors. We got these off of Amazon and if you're interested, we're gonna put a link in the description below. You slide one end onto the wire that you're gonna tap and the other end just plugs right into the side of it and you crimp down on that tab. The yellow ones are what we're gonna use for today's project and these are for 10 to 12 gauge wire. I'm gonna go under the truck and route our wires, and make it look nice and clean, and I'll meet you under the truck. We've switched over to phone cam. It's easier under the truck. We've got our wire coming down here. We're making sure we have plenty of slack so we can tie these up and zip tie them all together. We'll go over there and see what Fred Jr.'s doing. Now that we have our quick splice set up, the red wire with the black stripe is our hot lead going to our seven pin. The other red wire in our quick splice is what's going to be our alternator charging line running up to the truck bed. Let's set up our quick splice and crimp it down. One pro tip on this is just to kind of work back and forth when you sink this tab in, because if you try to squeeze it all at once, there's a high probability you're just going to bend the tab. So we've worked that back and forth and you can see it's seated nice and flush. We're going to close the cover connector to it and our positives hooked up. Slide the black wire in there negative set up where we want it and we're going to do the same thing and kind of work that tab back and forth and our alternator charging will be complete all right same thing we've got that one set up nice and flush that's tapped in there let's close that and hook it up now let's go test out our alternator charging did you know that fred jr has his own youtube channel now <laughs> that's right it's called fred jr's garage He's making videos for all kinds of automotive content. Head over there and give him some love. We're switching out this SAE two pin for this Anderson connection. We think it's gonna work a lot better. Notice that we painted both of these yellow so we know exactly where they're going. Now to hook up this Anderson plug, we're gonna to have to take out the Victron unit because it's getting wired into that. This is the new one that we ordered. The first one that we ordered for the first video uh, was not the right one. So we got this one installed now and this should work great. Let's look at the telemetry data from the Victron. It does have an app with it. It says our output voltage is 13.9 and our input voltage is 9.2. I'm not surprised that the voltage is lower on that for the input because it's pulling almost 20 amps. The output voltage is going to be higher and it's outputting about 15 amps. Let's talk a little bit about how much power we're getting from the truck. We've got the truck running, the alternator charging is hooked up to the power station, and we've got an amp clamp on the solar panel on the roof. That way we can do our math. We've got about 10, 10 to 11 amps coming in from the solar panel. We've got a total of 25 five 25 ish amps uh, coming into the whole system so that puts us at about 25 so right around 15 15 amps 14 15 amps coming in from the alternator right now with a total of 334 watts coming into our system both from solar and from the alternator this system will be hundred percent charged in 24 minutes. Roger's truck camper now has alternator charging hooked up and coming in and 200 watts of solar also charging his system. He has a 100 amp hour battery in the power station 
And of course he has a fridge and some LED lights. This is set up very similar to where you would set up a teardrop camper or even a travel trailer like uh, the Shadow Cruiser, a Sprinter van, um, a Ford Transit van. That's right. All these systems are set up very similar and they're pretty much the same. They're all utilizing the power source from that seven pin connector and a DC to DC charge controller to charge the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Whether it's a truck camper or a travel trailer, it's all using the same principles. And 15 amps is pretty good charging, especially when you can recover 15, 20% of your power loss in 100, 150 miles of travel time on the road. That's a win. Talk to us a little bit about how you have alternator charging set up on this travel trailer. For us, it all starts off of our seven pin connector. We have our seven pin connector coming from the truck routed directly into our Renogy unit. The Renogy unit is an MPPT charge controller that also allows for DC to DC charging from the tow vehicle. From our Renogy controller, it controls our solar and our alternator charging, and it runs through our bus bars to our three Dr. Prepare batteries. And these are 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Let's start the truck and plug our seven pin in, and we're gonna see what kind of amps we can charge our system with. Now, depending on the type of truck and the type of alternator that you have, coming off of your seven pin lead for our alternator charging, you can expect anywhere from nine to 18 amps. So there's quite a range in there. Now we're gonna take a look at the Renogy app that we have. Now our controllers are from Renogy and we have the Bluetooth controller as well. So we can use the Renogy app and it turned out to be a really valuable tool. That lets us break down all of our power in and our power out along with the different amps that our system's bringing in, whether it's from solar, the shore power, or the alternator charging. Now, we don't have to run our generator as much because we know exactly how much power we have in our system. Alternator charging isn't something that you're gonna use as a primary power source. You're gonna mostly use solar or your generator to completely charge your batteries. But when you're just topping them off or you're traveling that day, you're going to the next campsite, that's gonna allow you to show up and make sure your batteries are fully charged while you're on the road. If you guys have any questions about how we are using alternator charging in the truck camper or the travel trailer, leave a comment and ask us down there. Maybe you have your system set up a little different where you're running wires directly to the batteries of the tow vehicle. If that's the case, then we'd like to hear about it. Be sure to check out our previous videos that we've made for this truck camper and the power station that we made. I'll put links to them right here. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Pro tip would be to take the spare tire off.